All right, so this is real-time content updates, leveraging real-time content updates from Drupal to decoupled sites via NoSQL with Firebase and RethinkDB. Um, that's one hell of a title. So um, I know this is the final stretch, the witching hour. Um, if you're like me, this is the time of day where it's like, whoa, what's happening? I'm getting a little tired. So we're going to kind of keep this a little upbeat or what. I kind of wish they had like a little bar break between things so people get some <laughs> coffee or water or whatnot. Um, you know, if you're like me and you have kids, this is the witching hour when you go pick them up from school and you say, Daddy's got to work, be quiet, and they go and they yell at each other just because that's what kids do. Um, so I'm used to it. Um, but really admit it, you're all here because alternatively this really is introduction to writing clickbait session titles. So I included all the keywords I needed to include to get an audience. Um, so that's why we're here. All right, so the astute in the audience is probably saying, why Firebase and Rethink? That, those are the same things. Is what kind of Joomla hackery is this? What are we going to be talking about? Um, that really should be an or. It's a Firebase or Rethink. I, I guess you could do Firebase and Rethink, but it's kind of overkill, maybe not redundant. Um, but we'll get into that. All right, so the agenda, the sneak peek of the 50 minutes. Uh, what is this? What am I going to be talking about? Um, we're going to kind of define some concepts, make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, why would we do this? Um, cards on the table, 100%. We focus, this is our kind of setup for digital signage. When we do digital signage products, from the front end display to the back end Drupal and everything in between in all its full glory. And then how do we do this? You know, based on basic code. Um, we're not going to get into a major code, but I will show some examples and kind of go over things. And then finally, Q&A with my new BFFs in the room. So about me, my name is Roman Green. I am a lead Drupal architect at Media Current. I've been doing Drupal since about 2006-ish. Moved over to the JavaScript world sometime around 2014, 2015, um, because I really love JavaScript. Um, one of the JS maintainers and fanatic at uh, Media Current. Um, a little quick backstory about me. I know you're all here for the session and not about me. You don't really care about me. You're like, Robin, shut up. Just get to the code. Um, my background is actually in journalism. I was a reporter for about 10 years before I came over to computer science in 2003-ish, not to give away my age or anything like that. Um, and I spent so many years in newsrooms with angry editors who, when buttons didn't do things on websites, they got so angry and just yelled at you because things weren't working, it was the worst system in the world, and you need to get out of the room. Um, so when it comes to things like real-time content updating and you know publishing, I'm really in tune with the pains that we experience when we publish content and getting that out to the site and how that may interact with the website. Um, this really includes um, caching layers, which is the arch nemesis of every publishing person everywhere. So anytime you have varnish, every time you have a caching layer, if you have to explain, well, your story isn't on the website because it's cached, you're signing your death certificate right there when you tell that to someone. So you know, caching makes sense to us as developers. Doesn't make sense to the people actually making the content. So my goal, my entire focus on the internet is to get everything as real time as possible with, may, uh, with the infrastructure back end to support it. Um, I live in Ithaca, New York, just up the road about three hours, uh, about six hours if you go through New Jersey. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Come visit me sometime and this is the Ithaca starter pack if you have to get up there. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Robin L. Green or at twitch.tv slash mediacurrent. Uh, we have a Twitch current at TV at mediacurrent. If there's any other agencies in the room that want to throw down some Overwatch competitions, we'll take you on. So, What is mediacurrent? Got to do this. Boss man said I got to do it. Founded in 2007, we are a full service digital agency that implements world class open software development strategy and design to achieve defined goals for enterprise organizations seeking a better return on investment. Uh, phew. Remote distributed company based out of Atlanta, Georgia, founded in Atlanta, Georgia, probably close to 100 developers by now. Um, we do it all, everything from Drupal, decoupled Drupal to JavaScript to digital signage as we're seeing right here. We're hiring. They didn't tell me I couldn't do this, so that means I can do this. Uh, this is our hiring page. Uh, if you're interested in JavaScript, Drupal, digital strategy, project management, hit us up. Oh. I didn't know the second slide was still in there. Oh, I guess I got in there. Oh, third slide. Stop, that somehow got in there by mistake. Project, the projector's malfunctioning or something. All right, so what is this? Let's get on common ground. Um, not gonna be incredibly technical. We're gonna go over some code. We're also gonna go over a lot of high level concepts. So this is really gonna be a mixed bag of when do I need to decouple for digital signage? When do I need to go real time? What is real time problem is that gonna solve? And what do I need to know to start 
from a technical perspective, implementing that to my development team. So it's a little bit of everything. It's not going to be just, we're not going to dive into a library. I'm going to go over pages and pages of eight-point font on the code screen that you'll, nobody will ever read. And I'm not just going to sit up here and say, oh, and there's a database, and you push data to it, because that doesn't help anybody out. Um, small disclaimer, yeah, this is not technical. We're going to dive into a lot of code, but we're going to have a lot of fun going on here. So we're going to get into some concepts. Um, Let's see how simple this is and how we can actually implement this. So high level setup, what are we looking at? We're decoupled for digital signage. Um, Drupal's not gonna be publishing our front end, full stop. It's 100% decoupled. Uh, don't talk to me about Twig. I don't wanna get Twiggy with it or whatever all those Drupal sessions are at Drupal camps. Um, they're all wrong. I don't like Twig. I don't like the Drupal front end layer. I'm gonna be using Drupal's back end. I'm gonna be using the administrative part of it. Um, this is centered around digital signage and controlling that data in Drupal, but publishing it out to React. We use React with Node.js. Um, for this conversation, we're talking about React. You don't have to, you can use MooTools for all I care, or you know, jQuery. Whatever framework you wanna use, the sky's the limit. Um, you know, we can use, we use Netlify for hosting. Um, you don't have to, but we really like it. Uh, Node.js is pretty standard for decoupled for us. Um, for a lot of reasons, I'll get into this a little bit later, uh, you can't use PHP on the front end um, for technical limitations. It's not necessarily a personal preference. We like PHP, um, but technically we're limited, no PHP. We're also gonna use a little bit of Socket.io. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of Socket.io, we're just gonna mention it because we do utilize it. It's just a library, it's completely optional. But if you're doing a lot of React apps, um, and Node especially, I do highly recommend uh, looking into Socket.io and learning how to sort of implement this on your front end and what it does. Um, there was a fantastic talk, it was the first talk yesterday morning in yesterday's, converse, in this, yesterday's session, um, where the speaker said something that really resonated with me. He's like, we've had a lot of problems with our traditional PHP developers understanding that Node.js and the server and client code is the same thing. And that's been very true in something I've seen a lot. That, that concept with PHP developers, we're so in tune with, okay, I gotta configure Apache, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Now I gotta go write my PHP code. With Node and React and all that, that line becomes incredibly blurred to almost non-existent. Um, Socket.io will really help us um, bridge that gap between those things. A, a great example of that is database connections. Um, you're writing database connections in Node and React and maybe you don't wanna share that in the client front end. Socket.io can help bridge that gap between pushing data from your back end to your front end. It's something we don't really have to deal with with PHP, but it is something we look at with uh, JavaScript. And finally, the, no, not finally, no SQL or Firebase data layer. So Firebase, Rethink, Mongo, Redis, whatever you want to use, whatever, whatever database storage you're gonna use, that's fine. We're gonna focus on uh, Firebase and Rethink for this. Um, this is WebSockets. This, at, the, at the base level, we're gonna be talking about WebSockets. I'm not gonna mention WebSockets because that's a little bit technical. Um, we're gonna purely constrain it to rethink our Firebase and how those operate. But in reality, we're, we're talking about WebSockets for this concept. So what does this look like? Well, that's incredibly simple. Um, we basically have Drupal that controls our data and it pushes that data out to a NoSQL, our Firebase layer which then communicates in real time to our front end, Node.js or Netlify. And the clients connect to that. The clients don't ever know that Drupal exists. I don't want them knowing Drupal exists. I don't want anybody knowing I'm using Drupal. All those just connect down there to our front end and that handles all of the display and all of the content. Um, this is incredibly simplistic, but it is a basic architecture overview. Alternatively, what I really like about this in our app development is you could insert an iOS app, or Android app, if that's your preference. Anywhere in this you want. It can connect to the NoSQL layer or it can connect to the Node.js. Um, a lot of those uh, front end type D apps are really popular now. You can just insert that and you don't have to worry about, oh, how do I connect my app to Drupal and how do I share Drupal data up to my iOS app? We're not worried about that. We're not even caring about that. The only limits in this is your imagination and probably a little bit of physics and the time of the day. Um, and this is, this, is, this is our basic setup. Uh, can you go back? Is there a reason you don't have an arrow pointing back to Drupal in that picture? Because I never push back to Drupal. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, Drupal is one way only. Um, I'm going to mention this for digital display. If you're not interested in digital display, tune me out. Look up Facebook on your phone. Do something. I won't care. I'll let you know when I come back to it. Um, 
you do have to concentrate on what they call media players in the industry, and that is basically the device that sits somewhere and renders a content on the screen. Um, there are a lot of TVs that are coming into this now. They're building it ingrained with it. Um, there are companies, startups galore, building these, and the price point ranges from $50 up all the way up to, say, $5,000 for now. Um, if you're going to get into this, is this is something you're looking at doing, you will sort of have to consult a little bit on media player options or what kind of media player hardware you want to display on that TV. Um, we've recommended Raspberry Pis. A Raspberry Pi can do this. Um, all you have to do is render a headless browser in the screen and that's it. You're not going to get like 4K display, rich multimedia like you see over here at Times Square. You're not going to get that on a Raspberry Pi, but that's fine. You know, those people are dropping lots and lots of money to render rich multimedia on those displays. But if you're just doing like restaurant menus or a map or something like that, it's a very, very basic concept to install a media player. We as software people at Media Current, we don't want to get into this conversation. Um, there's a big disclaimer on that. We we will, and we will talk to you about, oh, well, we're going to need a server that renders this, and it's on this front end. Most people we see, they have hardware people. They have groups that manage their hardware. They have people that manage their TVs. We don't want to go and try to insert foreign hardware into a, a, a business. That's not really our forte, or I it, wouldn't expect it to be anybody's forte. Um, so if you can, you know, say, well, you need a media player, and we're happy to talk with those people, but we're going to focus on the back end infrastructure. Um, all it needs to do is display content. Again, if you're not, if you're just wondering about real time, you can come back to us now. So dictionary time. What does it all mean? What is all this going to do? What are we doing? Real time. So when we talk about real time, it's a little bit ambiguous. You see that it's a buzzword right now. It means anything to everywhere. Basically, content updates on all the clients, everywhere and every kind, as soon as the content is published in Drupal. What this means is as soon as somebody hits save on that node, it doesn't matter if it's one or a thousand or 10,000 devices are looking at that website, that content changes immediately with no refreshing. It's just instantaneous on the screen, the content updates. And that's what we have to have with digital displays. Um, imagine Google Wave. That was such an amazing program, wasn't it? I mean, where would we be without it? I use it every day. Yeah. Like Google Wave is so awesome. But that's, that's the concept of what we're going for, is the displays just maintain a persistent state. And the data updates on the displays in real time without a refresh needed. Um, we are aiming for a one-to-one -one client display without the content, with the content saving in Drupal without needing to refresh. This isn't really a terribly amazing concept. Concept. Um, everybody's gotten lured into CMSs by saying, oh, you can update your content in real time, and what that means is the content saves, and then as soon as somebody reloads that page, it works. Um, probably not gonna do real-time updates like this on a blog, because I don't care to you know, shove a new paragraph of text into somebody who's reading a blog. That's not a real applicable um, process for this. But in terms of like digital displays, or you got menus or something up there where there's no refresh, this is exactly what we're looking for. So really, we're really taking that CMS feature of real-time updates and adding that plus one to it. So decouple React and Node.js. So we're going to be using a Node.js server to build a React theme for display to the client, be that a browser, a screen, a device, and anything. Um, decoupled is kind of a generic term. We know this. That's why we're all here. Um, it's like saying CMS. It's a concept. So you know, you can have CMS. Well, is it WordPress? Is it Joomla? Is it something else? Um, decoupled in this sense is purely because we're using a real-time update and I don't want those I don't want those signs touching Drupal or even though that Drupal is there. So why should we decouple? Well, because this can't be in PHP. There's a technology limitation behind the way PHP, and bear with me, we get just slightly bit technical and then I'll scale it back. Um, PHP does not maintain persistent connections. So when a browser hits a PHP and it hits your website, you can't resend the signal to that PHP process and have it deliver that content again. The PHP says, I'm done, I did everything I need to do, I'm finished, and I'm not gonna do it again. Um, JavaScript doesn't do that. Uh, also, Python doesn't do that, and Java doesn't do that. So really, when you need real-time updates, um, any of those technologies you're looking at, um, you're looking at like a Java backend or a Python backend or usually JavaScript front end. That's why a lot of these places use JavaScript like that, is because they can maintain that persistent WebSocket connection. Um, there's really no way to sugarcoat that. It can't be in PHP. Um, it, it does 
slightly complicated infrastructure, you know, now you're going to have to need that other hosting out there that's not your Drupal Twig template or anything like that. Um, but the trade-off is we're decoupled and we're in real time. You could do this on a Drupal theme, and I'm really hesitant in saying this because if you go out and do it, um, please let me know, but I don't want to support it. Um, because you could have a Drupal theme that includes, say, a bare bones Angular or React, and you establish that WebSocket connection through that, and all of a sudden you've got your Drupal theme with a tacked on JavaScript library on top of it. It's theoretically possible. Even with Firebase, you could probably do that with Firebase because Firebase's integration is so simple. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend that. In fact, I would highly not recommend that because at that point, you've really not gained any huge benefit to providing that extra layer. Uh, no SQL, Firebase and Rethink. Um, these are my favorite. I love this. I love databases. I love it. I love how they work. I love talking about them. Um, I love everything about them. Um, we're going to be talking about No SQL, Firebase and Rethink, but like I said earlier, there's a ton of these out there. Um, any flavor of JavaScript library that's out there, any API, you've got a database layer to go with it. Um, so we're primarily going to be looking at Firebase and Rethink at this point. So what are they? Um, they're just another data layer, and I totally made that up. That doesn't mean anything anywhere outside of this room. Um, I made that up at 2 a.m., and I put the letters in bold in case there was any confusion about what that stood for. Um, it's just another data layer. It's just another piece of infrastructure that's holding our data as we formatted it. Um, there's not, I look, there's not a J, just jadl.js. If anybody wants to meet me at the bar tonight and we'll write that real quick, we'll create yet another JavaScript framework. I don't know what it means or what it does, but no, neither did anybody else who created one, so we can do that. Um, but they have cool features. Um, they're not just MySQL. You know, that, well, you already got MySQL, why would you use another one? Uh, these things have cool features, and we all like cool features. Uh, we'll get into what those cool features are and the, the code, but we're gonna leverage these. We're gonna go that extra mile and get that extra infrastructure because they provide something that we need. One quick thing before I go on, now that I mentioned databases and all of them out there. there I'm not gonna have any database argument. Um, there are 10,000 databases out there and everybody's got their preference as to which one they're, they like. Pick one that works. Each one does something well and the others complement the other thing they do well. In our implication, our, our situation of using Rethink, the live updates is why we went with that. But in your setup, if you find that Mongo provides the best support, by all means, use that. If Redis is your cup of tea and you love that, use that. This isn't, uh, this isn't a talk to convince you to use Rethink. But if you do it, fantastic. This is just a, a talk to basically introduce what these are doing. Um, I found pros and cons with everyone out there. And I haven't really settled on one I love more than the other based upon evolving and moving goals. So let's get into Firebase real quick. What is it? Um, Firebase, in case you didn't know, I'm under sit, get in. It's a Google tool. It's part of the Google platform. And it is basically a very, very basic plug and play database layer that we're going to use in the Google suite. Um, our data is pushed to Firebase, and they give us an API that then we can pull that data out of Firebase any way we see fit. Um, that's it. The, uh, when I said it was incredibly simplistic, I wasn't lying. Um, Firebase although at its core has a lot more to it. What we're using for here is very, very straightforward. The pros, it's easy. It's plug and play integration, meaning you just plug in the library and it immediately starts working in any JavaScript environment. And it is a Google Suite product. I mean, that's a huge pro for some people. The cons, the cost, it has a cost. Um, you don't get access to your database layer. You have no control over database. You have, not, you have access to it. And you can read and write, but that's it. You can't optimize, you can't do any of that other stuff. Um, and it's a Google Suite product. That's a con for some people as well as a pro. Um, more about Firebase, like I said, it is an incredibly rich product. Um, nobody can read this because I can't even read this, but if you go to the Firebase Google page, you'll see it's not just a real-time database layer. It has a ton of other platforms and applications that you can use. It was primarily known for their real-time updates, their WebSocket type persistent connections, but it has since evolved into a complete product. Um, it's actually really, really impressive. Um, for a lot of our applications, it's overkill because we just need that database layer, but it is a very, very full-featured suite from, uh, from Google. In our experience, Firebase has been the easiest to set up. Um, 
It is plug and play, like I mentioned several times. Um, you just plop in the code, you've got a UI, and you're immediately delivering content in real time. Um, it has been by far the easiest setup for our decoupled sites. The UI is very stripped down, very, very stripped down. Um, this is basically what you look at when you log into it. You've got your tables, you add content, and you edit it, and that is all you ever do. Um, if you're used to looking at you know, database UI tools, or are you used to manipulating things or adding you know, foreign keys, indexes, that kind of stuff, um, they don't really give you that right out of the gate like this. You're pretty much primarily looking at your data structure when you log into Firebase. That's a good and bad thing. Um, some people really want that. Some people need more control. Um, evaluate it depending upon what your needs. Um, you know, it, you don't have to optimize the database. You don't have to worry about database performance. You simply plug it in and deliver the content. Uh, mm, kind of a dual-edged sword there. So what about Rethink? So Rethink is a NoSQL database that has primarily been known up until lately of the real-time flavor of database of, of NoSQL database layers. Um, we could spend all day talking about different NoSQL databases. Um, Firebase, Rethink, Mongo. Mongo just introduced real-time updates, I think, in a February patch. Um, Redis, all those out there. Um, like I said, I, I can't tell you which one to use. I can't sit up here and tell you which one is the best. I can't tell you which one you should go forward. All I can say is when we hear a need for a real-time update, we usually go to Rethink, unless the client has said, I want to use Google Suite, or I'm on Google Suite, and I need to use Firebase. And then we can go back to Firebase. When we're standing up proof of concepts, when we need to do something like that, or you know, I'm playing around with something, because it's Google and it has developer tools with a free account, um, Firebase is very, very simple to go forward. So Rethink, it is the best known for its real-time updates. Um, it is open source. You're going to deploy it on your own infrastructure. There is no Rethink service you sign up for and you get a login and you log in to see your database. It doesn't exist. It, there might be a service that provides it, but it's not from Rethink. So you're going to be downloading this library and implementing it on your stack, which does increase your technical responsibility for setting up these sites. Um, it actually has a really cool administrative interface that you get on that server as well, where you can see all your tables, your shards, a data explorer just like GraphQL. Um, and so you can build out your queries right there in real time with your database. Um, I think that's pretty neat. Um, you're going to have to support it. It's self-managed. There's nobody at Rethink that's going to come to your you know, organization and provide you a service level agreement for it. It's completely open source. You download it, you go with it, it's yours. Um, or hire someone to maintain it. So why would we do this? Why are we doing this? Why are we going to all this trouble? We have just increased our technical hurdles. We've increased our infrastructure setup. Why are we doing all this? Why don't I just create that Drupal 8 theme and be done with it? I've answered that with the digital signage a little bit, but let me step back to a higher concept of that and define two methods of basically transferring data back and forth on the web. Push or pull. This is the quintessential data. Basically, pulling data is old and busted. Pushing data is the new hotness. So forget everything you knew about set timeout or set interval in JavaScript with that Ajax wrap around it. In the world of tomorrow, which is where we're at right now, we're pushing data down from the database to the client. That's compared to the client saying every three seconds or 30 seconds or one minute, whatever that is, asking the server if they have content updates and then doing something with it. We're flipping that around basically and saying that we need to push data from our data source as opposed to pulling it from the client. So what does, that, what does that look like? Let's step into those. So pulling data, as I said, here's your quintessential jQuery example over here with get data. We're going to wrap an AJAX call or a, a request around a set timeout that repeats every five seconds. Um, you'll commonly see this in set interval or set timeout to an API source. And basically, this is a fire and forget, you know, very kind of foolproof way of saying, hey, every five seconds, I'm going to check for data. And if there's new data, I'm going to update it. Or I may just replace all the data and just assume the data source is a source of truth. Um, this works. <laughs> and we've all done this. We've all done this many, many times. Um, problem is, it is very inefficient. Um, the other problem is, it's not 2011 anymore. We don't need to do this. Um, it doesn't make sense to pull data every so many seconds and ask for changes when we have ways now to let the source know that data has changed. And that is the pushing method. 
In this method, the database, or the data source, is responsible for letting the clients know when the content has updated. Digital signage must follow this methodology because it scales. Pulling data does not scale. So there is no code sample here to show you how a database pushes code because you'll never write code for that. The database handles that. Firebase handles that. They handle the socket connections of pushing that data out. All we have to do is write the front end code that opens up that connection and listens for it. And with rethink, this is a rethink uh, example here, it's the changes, that, that dot changes right there in the middle of the table. That says, keep this connection open and listen for changes, and that callback after run will execute every time a change come in. And then we can do whatever we want with that data. We can update state, we can update you know, any data source we need on the page. And we do this because it requires decoupling Drupal, and that's always a win in my book. Anytime I can get decouple or make a case to decouple, I'm going to do it. So how do we do this? How do we make that API request? How do we not crash our web server? Firebase is extremely straightforward. This is the PHP code. They provide a PHP SDK that you can download, integrate into Composer on your Drupal 8 build, throw it into a hook node, throw it into a hook update, something like that. And all we're doing is taking our structured data and pushing it up to the, re to the Firebase layer. Um, how we define that data in an array will determine how it's structured at Fire uh, in Firebase. Firebase doesn't care if we nest it 10,000 times or one time. Um, they'll take that structured away array and create that in their database. Uh, and that's it. That's all we have to do to push the content up to Firebase. We're not emulating the node object here. We're not emulating an entity record. We're not emulating anything one-to-one -one from Drupal because I don't care about that. All I care about is getting the data in Firebase to look like I need it on my front-end layer. And so that involves you know, taking an array of data, that content array, and pushing it up to Firebase. So some of you are saying, why didn't you just... Um, I'm not going to get into that level of detail here. Um, you're probably right. There's probably a better way to handle this on the Drupal side in terms of why didn't you just set this on a cron, or why don't you just cron push this? Um, you're right. I don't want to go into that detail of best applications on how to send data to Firebase, because that's going to entirely depend upon your need. We've seen it sometimes where as soon as you hit node save, it pushes to Firebase, or it pushes to rethink. Um, sometimes you need to hold it and send it every night, and send it on a hook cron, or maybe you need an entire collection of content before you see it. Um, not going to go into that layer of detail, just know that in theory, what you're going to be doing, also with Rethink, is calling an SDK library and pushing a structured data array up to how those um, SDKs define it. In this case, there is also an API on GitHub for Rethink. And it is, it is basically the same concept. We are going to create a structured way of our content. We're going to take our object and insert it and run it up there. And we connect to the, third, to the library, the my.data.com, or wherever that Rethink um, infrastructure sits. Um, but this is all we have to do on the Drupal side. And it seems sort of trivial. It seems maybe a little simplistic. Uh, but that's all we need to do. Because back you know, to your original question is, I'm not pulling data. I'm not keeping that two-way data in sync. Once Drupal pushes it up, I, I don't care about it anymore. I pushed it to that other database layer out there. Um, let the content management part of the CMS manage the content. And let us get our content down to the other database where we can implement on the front end. Speaking of front end, Rethink has a changes in their connection JS, which keeps a persistent connection open to the database. Updates are passed to the callback, letting the dev decide how to handle changes. So on the left-hand side here, I've got the Rethink code to read from that database and handle changes. On the right there, I've got the Firebase how to do it. And they're both basically the same. We're going to open a persistent connection and Rethink its changes. In Firebase, it's that content ref on, and they provide callbacks. And in that callbacks, we just decide what we want to do with that data at that time. Um, Firebase does require an authentication. Um, when you create a Firebase account, I'll go into this a little bit, um, you get an authentication token, and you provide that in a JSON file, and you stick that on your server in a non-web accessible place, and you do, have to, you do have to use that in your request so that Firebase knows who you are. 
Um, that's because Firebase is a service. It's a, it's a wide open out there for anybody to connect to it. Rethink out of the box doesn't, um, good and bad. Um, if you go right now and download Rebase to your laptop and install it, they won't require you to authenticate to the database. So you can just literally say, my host is at mydatasource.com, let me connect, and it says, okay, you're connected, pull down the data. Um, good and bad, good for developers, not so great for you know, production sites. But again, it all comes down to those callbacks. When the rethink sees that changes, whenever data changes in that database table, it hits that callback, and we can do whatever, whatever we want with that on the front end. Um, when Firebase, when that data changes in Firebase, the, the dot on value snapshot change, that's your callback, and you can do whatever you want with it. That's a little bit of React code, this dot set state. I'm setting the state in React of whatever that value should be there. So in conclusion, we have decoupled with whatever front end you want to do that instantly pushes content managed from Drupal um, to another database level in real time with services that scale. Um, being the important part. This scales. This, this really, really scales up. This also opens up an avenue to a live preview in the Drupal administration system. Um, we've done this, and it's very, very straightforward to take your node add screen and add a live preview of the content just based upon your database connections, your NoSQL, your Firebase, whatever data that's using, you simply add that into your Drupal admin theme and you can preview content as it's rolling in without an additional theme layer necessary. Um, this is front end layer agnostic. We're sending data out and saying, I don't care what you do with it, here's the data. I don't care if you're, it's in React or if it's in Angular or if it's in Vue or whatever you wanna do. Or maybe they wanna rebuild your entire site in Python by Christmas. I, I don't care anymore because I know that I'm, I'm running it in Drupal. I'm managing my data in Drupal, all the content's there. But my front end, I just provide that API information, that data structure, and you can, you can build it however you want, and if you want to change the back end every three months, it's no longer a big concern as it is with traditional Drupal 8 and Twig sites. That's it. Any questions? Bob? How do you handle, uh, on a digital sign, you, they want to change something? How, does, how do you handle that in the in the uh, CMS? So the question is, on a digital sign, they want to change something. How do we handle that? What specifically do you mean they want to change? Well, existing content, they want to change the, the, the headline. So the headline would be defined as a, like a headline in the database, and the digital sign already knows to read that field. So they just edit that story. And on both Rethink and Firebase, when you send the story, or when you send the, the data, the response is an ID. And that ID is the, the key to the t that table there. So then what we've typically done is stored that key inside the node in Drupal. And so if it sees that key, it sends an update as opposed to a create request. Gotcha. So, so it'll load the edited, con like the current content? Yeah, in, in Drupal, yes, yeah. in Drupal, okay. yep. Okay. yep. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so you had you were using Node.js mm -hmm. uh, as a server in between your digital signage and um, Firebase. For Correct. Example. Yes. Um, what is the advantage of using Node.js rather than having the digital signage connect directly to Firebase? So the advantage is you're working in the ecosystem. So the question is, what is the advantage of using Node.js server um, to connect as an intermediary between React versus just having React connect to Firebase or having something connect to Firebase? So. It goes back to sort of that socket I.O. and the whole ecosystem of decoupled and React and all that. That layer plays well together tremendously. You can just throw Angular on a Drupal theme and connect to Firebase with just that snippet of code. That will completely work independent of Node.js. Um, you can do that. We have found that the scaling, the performance, the front end, we don't ever want to hit Drupal. We don't ever want to hit Twig. We don't ever want to bootstrap Drupal. Even with a varnish layer, we don't want to do that. So having that node in React and Angular kind of bundle, it's really the quintessential setup that we're seeing, and it's just a, it's a familiar ecosystem for the developers to build against. Any other questions? And if the device that present the, the content so were to have, a, let's say, a feedback in the future, you, you would have a data flowing back. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how would you handle that? I'm sorry, what was where, where will you store the data? On the device? Um, you know, if the user had the, the, the ability to provide feedback on the screen. Oh, yes, yes. You know, you will have a stream of data. Yes, yes. Back, uh, so, would you 
put that under Drupal database? Or? Right, so the question is if the display or the application needed to somehow interact with the user or the user needed to provide feedback, how would we handle that data? Would we store it somewhere on the device? Would we just store it, store it in Node or would we push it back to Drupal? Um, we highly emphasize never, ever, ever pushing back to Drupal. We don't want that data coming back a round trip to Drupal. So we would evaluate, okay, do we need to use a service worker? Do we need to store it in Node or React? You know, where does this data? Um, or is it a data persistent that needs to go up you know, to the database layer and be stored there, the Firebase or React? Um, for these sort of digital signage applications, we're not doing things like user authentication. You know, we're not worried about session tokens like that. Um, so there's never a need to sort of sync data back and forth to Drupal, but it's going to highly depend upon where that, that data needs to exist. Um, for a digital, design, digital sign, you know, that data is going to be relatively throwaway. You know, when one person uses it and they go away, you don't, you don't want to persist that data. Um, with an app, it's going to depend upon how you, your use case for that app and whether you want to store that in the app's code or, you know, in somewhere so else like that. It would end up in some kind of analytics platform, maybe? Something like that, yeah. yeah. So a lot of the sessions we go to, they're always talking about um, this is mostly for anonymous user mm -hmm. traffic. So if you were to rebuild a portal, and obviously you need to um, have an authenticated experience yes. initially, um, would it not make sense to build a React app for once the users are authenticated on their end? Mm -hmm. um, or that's probably not <laughs> helpful. So, so the question is, if we did need user authentication, would it make sense to build a React sort of handler or app that could handle that authentication? Um, I'll just be 100% honest with you. I have never dealt with a need for to authenticate on the React layer. Um, that's never been a need or request that's come up. Um, I can see where that would. I can see the, both the technical challenges of that and the need to build something like you said. Um, but we we generally deal with anonymous type displays. So. And um, okay. And let's say you have uh, an IDP. Right, that does authentication mm -hmm. and all that, and you're all good. Um, you could still have a React app minus the one component that's going to keep you logged in, right, through, through the IDP. Yes. So you could still have a fully decoupled site um, using React and everything. It's just the one component of like having the IDP layer that's not a React, right? Yes, yes. That would work as well. That would you work as well. have real time updates instead of having to make like Ajax call. You know, callbacks and stuff like that. Yes, that could work as well. So the question is, you know, if you did need that and you had an IDP, you could still create that additional React layer and have that functionality. And you could do that. And we get into that sometimes with kiosks where they want people to log in to their account. Um, but we don't really do real-time type situations at kiosk level like that. That's, that's you know, D, that's Drupal type session. So. Could you talk a little bit more about the preview experience? Oh, you? yes. <laughs> I shouldn't even have mentioned it, yeah. should I? Okay. So the question is about preview, and we have time, so I can go into this. Demo. Yeah, no. Live demo. I'm under a major NDA. I can't show that live demo. <laughs> um, so the question was, live preview, what would you do? Um, so your, your database connection, let's just say Firebase. Um, you can throw that snippet of code into any you know, HTML markup you need. Let's say you have a Drupal administration theme. You throw that connection in there, and now you've got access to the same data that it, it's going to store at the same time when you hit save. Typically what we do is we do the Drupal form API, which is my nemesis and I can't stand it, um, Ajax type calls, so when they're, up, when they're on a, you know, a title field and you Ajax on that, in your callback on the Ajax field, we're calling that Firebase load and we send it to a temporary table. And we store that in a temporary table. We get that ID back where it's at. And then we have, a little, maybe we have a little bit of jQuery code, you know, unfortunately because it's Drupal. Or we have, maybe we've gone all out and thrown um, a React in there. Or I've even seen it with iframes on a page. You iframe a display somewhere else. And you render that in the administration theme wherever you can. Um, wherever you can be in the keyword. And so that way when they're updating it, you're updating that database. And if you're calling, let's say you've got an iframe, which I would never recommend, but I've seen it used effectively, um, you're actually sourcing that iframe to your live theme engine, that other React site. And so you're previewing the content as they're going to see it when they hit save, except you're storing it in like a temporary table. Cool. There's also a concept that someone at MediaCran has played with. Um, you can open WebSocket connections between Chrome tabs. So 
I wish I, I should have brushed up on it, but I hadn't talked to the guy in a couple of weeks since coming here. Um, you can actually have the administration theme create a WebSocket, and then in another tab, source that WebSocket and load a site on your front end. And as you're editing the content, um, because you're working in the developer tools, you're sending content between tabs. And so then you can update it in the other tab. Um, it's, that's a little bit more technical. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, well, thank you for coming.